If you want to paint summer illustrations like this, aside from having to deal with anatomy, you also likely need to paint water, which is probably one of the hardest things to paint well. That's why today we'll be looking at Fajobore and how she handles water in one of her art series called Clear Parts. We're gonna start with the humble droplet, then progressively do harder things. Let's dive right into it. Alright, so first off, if you're thinking, huh, how hard to paint can a water drop be? Oh boy, you're in for a long ride. Fajobore always starts with defining the silhouette, which is pretty standard and effective, especially for the anime style. She also does it with 3D sometimes, which we'll talk about later. Bo'o has surface tension, which basically means that they like to group together into a sphere. They just like to cuddle, you know? So with the silhouette, you always want to make sure that it's sort of this rounded shape. Even when it's stretching like this, it's still going to be rounded at the end. It'll be sort of thick like this. Uh, once we have the silhouette sort of done, we want to move on to setting up some lighting. Remember, we can always come back to push and pull with transform and liquify later on. Let's keep it flowing for now. For this demo, let's just keep the lighting simple and use an outdoor setting like this, with the sun coming from this angle. There will also be the ambient skylight and some bounce light here and there. If you want to learn more about lighting in general, I have a full guide on lighting here that you can check out next. The lighting involved now, the whole thing just became 10 times more complicated. But don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you. You have three main points you need to remember. Bo -o is highly reflective, which means that it will often get strong highlights on the planes facing the light source. Okay, okay, this is easy so far. And since it's reflective, it will also reflect some of its surroundings. A good way to think about this is it's always gonna be sort of a fish eye mirror image. It's gonna be warped and blurred like this, since water drops are always rounded like we discussed. You also get a little bit of frenetic effect even with droplets, although it's easier to see on larger bodies of water. Fresnel effect is basically the different amount of reflections you see based on the viewing angle. Wait, what does that mean? Basically, the closer the angle it is to parallel, the more reflective the surface becomes. So with the edges here, there'll be a touch of that Fresnel going on. And that's why the reflections tend to group more towards the edges here. But Jobrea likes to just use broken dot lines or straight up white lines to simulate the Fresnel effect. There's also a slight grading going on after the line, and this is just a lightened layer with an airbrush going around the edge. The middle part of the droplet will be a little dark and see through. So for this, I'll use a multiply layer to darken it with an airbrush. Then we finally have spectral splitting, which oddly sounds like a Pokemon move. Basically, white light getting split into different colors when there's refraction. For us artists, this means that there will be saturated edges on the droplet here where the reflection groups are. Kinda like a rainbow. You can see Fajabore did the same thing here with these edges, although very simplified. She tends to make the reflection groups fairly white and with more saturated colors. This makes the water feel very clear and pretty. Alright, and that's how to build a water droplet using this setup. Now, let's try to increase the amount of water. But before we do that, let's touch a little on how Fajobore uses 3D for water. I won't go too deep into this, but it seems like she uses Blender to sculpt the form of the water splashes, then add a combination of photo texture plus a basic water material on the model. And if any of you guys know how to use Blender, then I have a good news for you. I actually made the water material myself, so if you want to try out the 3D workflow yourself, you can go to the link down below the blend file that has all the material settings. You are welcome. Now, with a larger body of water, there are roughly two groups. Water that's not moving and water that's moving. Let's start with the easy one. There are four things that you have to keep in mind in general. Even if I said it's not moving, but like I mentioned before, hardly any body of water in the real world is ever completely still. There are always going to be some level of disturbance going on. The overall form can be simplified to a flat surface, but there will be this wavy texture going on top of it. If the water is touching something, for example here, there will be a line going on around the object because of surface tension. Painting these little details in will make it extra realistic and rich rather than just a dead boring. and boring puddle with 
zero movement. If the water is found in natural sources, let's say you're painting a river or something, there'll be impurities like pee from upstream that affects the color and transparency, so keep that in mind. And this might be triggering, but the best way to get these things down is none other than using reference. Remember that Fresnel effect that we talked about? You can see in these examples, most of the highlights will gather at the back, whereas the water at the front will be more transparent. It's the same Fresnel effect, just on a larger scale. And lastly, there's also that light doesn't penetrate all the way to the bottom when water gets too deep. So you find that it transitions from light blue to dark blue as the water gets deeper. This is because of how light scatters, which I will not go into. You can read it up on Wiki. Enough nerdy is Info from me. Now, the slightly hues that you see, like this here, is a little greener, and this is more blue. This depends on the amount of aquatic plants that's in the water. And these plants are usually found in shallower water where sunlight can reach the bottom. Now, on to flowing water. The biggest thing with flowing water is surface tension. When water crashes like this, it's going to get split up into an army of small beads. And because water is reflective, these tiny little droplets will appear white when you zoom out. Alright, so to paint moving water, you first need to capture the shape or the silhouette, just like what we did with the droplets. Except this time, it's a little harder because now it's not a simple sphere or flat surface anymore. This one has got some curves to it. And once that's established, you want to paint in the smaller form changes like this onto the bigger form. The next thing to add in would be the reflections. And remember that it's not still water, so the reflection follows the form change. Kind of like when you're painting a smelly ring graphic tea. Oh, what's that smell? I have no idea where this analogy came from. And finally, the white parts. Adding some motion blur here and there will help sell the feeling of movement. This part is kind of like painting hair. Some like to make it very graphic. Some like to be very detailed and realistic. It's completely up to you. Bonus tip. Since we're talking about water, I have to touch on caustic's effect. Although this is mainly for underwater scenes or when you have a drink on a table or something. That's this wavy like pattern that you see on the floor of a swimming pool. I find the best way to do this is to use textures and brushes, then warp it into perspective. Of course, you can paint it in by hand, but Ain't nobody got time for that. if you're painting underwater scenes, then this is important to add for that extra realism. All right, let's do a piece with everything we learned. So we have our lovely character here, Helm from Nikkei that I painted ahead. It's a simple scene of her playing at the beach, getting splashed by water. I'm going to start with the silhouette of the water splashes first to roughly get the shape down. I'm a good boy. So here's some references I use for the shape. Once that's done, we can proceed to fill in the shapes with color. And here I'll use four layers for the rendering. A lighten layer for the outer reflections, multiply for the middle parts, a normal layer for the spectro splitting, and finally a color dodge layer for brightening the reflections. I will also use a mask on a base layer here to erase the middle parts with an airbrush to make it transparent. If the water is thick like this part here, I will go ahead and do some refractions effect to make it more realistic. Easy way to do this is to just duplicate the stuff you want to distort. In this case, it's uh... Yeah, I just use liquify and push things around until they look distorted. For this, I recommend switching between the enlarge and shrinking modes for the fisheye effect. And honestly, liquify is so OP here, so I highly recommend it. I'll also add some light leaking through the water since it's a backlight setting. I'll be using a soft light layer and go around the edges using an airbrush. And just to flex on you guys, I'll add some caustics effect here as well near where she's standing. If you made it through here, congratulations, you are now P. PhD in fluid dynamics. And if you like this video, you'll probably find this one interesting too, so go watch it next. You know, if everybody can paint summer illustrations like this, the world would be a better place. This video is just me planting the seeds for the eventual harvest. <laughs> Alright, bye!